Okay, for question eight, we have the following circuit. We know VCC 8 volt, VE minus 4 volt, VB 0.7, beta equals to 50. The collector current is 2 milli amperes. Uh, VC is 5 volts. The emitter resistance is 200 ohms. And R1 is 8K, 80K. We just need to design the values of RC and RT. So let's start with RC, which is kind of simpler analysis. So we know that. VE, right, this potential here, minus this potential here, should be equal to the current at the meter times the meter resistance, right? So we can isolate VE here as IE, RE plus VE, right? And we know that the collect the emitter current is equals to the collector current divided by alpha. So this is times RE plus VE. -E. Okay. And alpha we know that we can back we can substitute using uh, beta, so IC alpha is equals to beta divided by beta plus one, right? So it's divided by beta divided by beta plus one. So it's the same as multiplying. So it's time 51 uh, times T 200, right? Plus minus four, so it's just minus four. And then this IC here, we know that it is two milli ampere. So this gives us a uh, emitter voltage that is equals to minus 3.592. Now that we know VE, we can also apply a condition regarding, so this is VE and this is VC, right? So we can calculate VC because we know that VCE that's equals to VC minus VE, right? So we can isolate VC in this one and VCE is plus VE. And this gives us <clears throat> five minus or plus VE, which is minus 3.592. This gives us a collector voltage of 1.408 volts. Now that we know now that we know VC, we can apply the same analysis. So here we know VCC, here we know VC. Then we know that the collector uh, resistance should be equals to VCC minus VC divided by the collector current, right? This is just like using Ohm's law. So in this case, RC is equals to eight, right? That's the value of VCC minus VC. So it's minus 1.408 divided by the collector current, which is two milli amperes. This gives us 3.296 kilo ohms, okay? And that's the first answer for this problem, cool? Now for the second problem, uh, remember that for to find out what's the voltage applied uh, I mean, the, the, the resistor at the base, we need to apply uh, Thevenin's uh, theorem uh, at the circuit at the base. So this circuit here, it's connected at the base, right? So if we redraw it down here, so let me just, uh, so let me redraw it uh, here on the side. So we have the voltage source, R1, R2, another voltage source, which is VEE, and here's the ground. So this is VEE, and this is VCC, right? This is R1, this is R2, and here is our VTH. Or it's going to be like, sorry, this is not VTH. This is the base term, 
right? So if you want, you can use uh, we can we can calculate VTH, right? And VTH is going to be the voltage between this node here and the ground. And for that, we can apply superposition. So for the first circuit, we have just VCC here, then R1, then R2. Okay. So we basically short circuit VEE. And then the VTH that I'll call VTH1, right? Is going to be so let me write it up here so vth1 it's going to be just a voltage divider right so it's vcc times r2 divided by r1 plus r2 now for the second uh, voltage source we short circuit vcc so we are end up with r1 r2 and then our voltage source here so this is ve Right, and here's the ground, and this is VTH. So now we are still measuring VTH2 in respect to the ground, right? So if we look at the circuit, this is just like another uh, a second voltage divider, but now it's the voltage across R1, not R2, right? Because we are measuring the voltage between this node here and the ground. So it's the voltage across R1, right? So VTA2 is just VEE now times R1 divided by R1 plus R2. So the overall Thevenin voltage VTH is equals to VTH1 plus VTH2, okay? So let me just write up here. because they are both in the same polarity, okay? And we also need to calculate the Thevenin resistance, right? So the Thevenin resistance, we just short circuit both voltage sources, and then we see that the resistance seen from this terminal and the ground is just the parallel between R1 and R2, right? So the Thevenin resistance, RTH, is just R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus. R2. So that's our uh, Thevenin analysis. So we have this uh, result here. Just have to remember that VTH2 is this one and VTH1 is this one here, right? So we are good with this analysis. Now, if we represent the circuit at the base using this Thevenin equivalent circuit, we know that we have VTH here, right? Then we have RTH here and here is the base VB, right? And the current that's flowing here is actually IB, which we know that is just IC divided by beta, which in our case gives us 40 microamperes. It's 2 milliamperes divided by 50, right? And if we if we look at the the base terminal or like if, because we know the voltage at the emitter, remember we calculated up here. So this is the voltage at the emitter, right? This one here. It's the voltage at the emitter, uh, and we know VBE. We can calculate the base voltage here as so VB minus VBE equals to VE or we can represent just VB equals to VBE plus VE, which in our case gives us a VB of 0 0.7, right? VBE plus VE, which is minus 3.592. VB is equals to minus 2.89 volts. So we know VB. Now, if you look at this circuit again for for the voltage, for the using the Thevenin voltage, just to recall that we have RTH here, we can apply like a loop analysis here, or just like Ohm's law, and we know that VTH minus IB times RTH is equals to VB, right? 
So we start at VTH, there's a voltage drop across this RTH, but then we arrive here at node, the node at the base, which has VB. Okay. Now, if we substitute the values of VTH that we calculated up there and RTH in this equation here, we can isolate R2, right? So VTH is VCC times R2 divided by R1 plus R2, right? plus VEE times now R1 divided by R1 plus R2, right? Minus IB times RTH, which is R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. And that equals to VB, right? Now, if we multiply both sides by R1 plus R2, we kind of simplificate this uh, equation, and then we are left with VCC R2 plus VEE R1 minus IB R1 R2 equals to VB R1 plus R2, right? And again, if we isolate R2 in this equation here, we get that R2, so let me Isolate the terms, minus IB R1 minus VB should be equals to R1 VB minus VEE R1, right? So this gives us an equation for R2 that looks like R2 equals to R1 times VB minus VEE divided by VCC minus IB R1 minus VB. And if we substitute the values of R1, VB, VE, and IB, like remember that IB is 40 microamperes, we just calculated it. So this gives us uh, R2 equals to 11.523 kilo ohms. Okay, so this is R2. Okay, R2, and then RC is just uh, over here. Okay, so that's it for this problem.